Now I've tested the X1 Nano, I've tested the X12 Detachable, two new offerings from Lenovo's ThinkPad line here for 2021. But I just took delivery of this. This is the X1 Titanium Yoga. This is the third new offering from the ThinkPad line here in 2021. Now this offers a couple of unique things. Number one, this is made of titanium, at least this part is the top cover. And it also has a three to two aspect ratio. Now that is a little bit different than the 16 to 10 aspect ratio with the X1 Carbon and the X1 Yoga Gen 9 and Gen 6 respectively. And it also has a carbon magnesium chassis, 13 13.5 inch QHD touchscreen display. We're gonna get into that and more coming up in this first look at this device. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my unboxing and first look at the all new X1 Titanium Yoga. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit was provided by Lenovo. Once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the X1 Titanium Yoga starts at $1684.99. I'll put the link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Lenovo introduced three new products this year, two of which I've already reviewed, the X1 Nano and the X12 Detachable. Links for both will be in the description below for those that didn't see it. Both are excellent devices and I highly recommend checking them out. As far as the X1 Titanium Yoga, the difference between the other two, this sports a 3 to 2 aspect ratio as opposed to a 16 to 10. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now they do include the pen in the box, which is good to see. It uses the Wacom AES technology, which I'm a big fan of. I like the fact that it has an eraser on the top that has Bluetooth functionality. You get a very compact 65 watt USB-C power adapter with the extension cord. Now the smaller box within does house the unit itself. Lifting the lid of that box reveals the unit and I gotta say, holding it for the first time, Wow, this thing is super premium, extremely light, and super thin. This might be one of the thinnest laptops I've ever held. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but you do get some documentation and warranty information as well. The top lid is made of titanium, and it does have a carbon and magnesium chassis. This thing is rock solid, especially when you consider this is a ThinkPad made to take a licking and keep on ticking. And what I love about the build quality is not only does it have a military grade rating, but it's also undergone over 200 tests to make sure that the quality is there. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now these both can do data charge display out with the benefits of course with Thunderbolt 4, you can drive multiple 4K monitors or one 8K monitor. Moving over to the right side is your power button, a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack, and a Kensington lock port. That rounds out all the ports on this very thin laptop. They didn't put in a micro SD card slot, no ethernet port, and of course, no USB-A port. Now this is a very thin device, so they had to sacrifice those ports to get it this thin. Now, I love the way that Lenovo makes it super easy to get inside this laptop. Just loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice a single fan for cooling. You'll notice the very small SSD slot on this. Premium here is going to be thinness, so they had to sacrifice some things, and they made a very small SSD, which is user replaceable. Now, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. This has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and performance has been good so far. We'll talk about that in the full review. The wireless LAN card, that's all soldered in. You won't be able to upgrade that. The good news is this is Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. Now there is an option for wireless WAN that uses 5G or LTE and I gotta say I love having that on a laptop. I'm glad it's here as an option. Now while inside you'll notice that it has a 44.5 watt hour battery and Lenovo claims you'll get up to 11.7 hours on a single charge. I'm seeing about 9 hours on a single charge in my initial use so far. I'll bring you the final numbers in my full review. 
And like most two-in-one convertibles, you can't open the lid with one finger. That's due to the hinges, of course, for that 360-degree use with this as a tablet. Now, as you notice the keyboard with the lid open, you see that it is a ThinkPad keyboard. It has the ThinkPad DNA. And you know I'm a big fan of the ThinkPad keyboards with the good tactile feedback and the good key travel. Now, I was concerned going into this, as I was with the X1 Nano, that it would have not great key travel due to the thinness of the laptop. Well, the good news is it's actually really comfortable to type on, nice tactile tactile feedback, good key travel. I had no complaints on that front. In fact, I like typing on this for extended periods of time. I did a test last night and it came through with flying colors. It also has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now, this is also a spill resistant keyboard, which I absolutely love since I am constantly spilling things, coffee, water, whatever it might be. And I like to know that at least I have a fighting chance that this may survive a spill. And borrowing a page from Apple, this has a haptic feedback trackpad. That means there's no physical click here. You're getting it all from the haptic feedback engine. And it works well. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth. And all the Windows 10 gestures are working as you'd expect. No surprises here. Working very well. And of course, it wouldn't be a ThinkPad without the track point. It works well as you'd expect. Not everybody's going to love it, but it is part of the ThinkPad DNA. It's not going away anytime soon. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. The tent mode is great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube pleasure on this device. Now, you could also put it into the stand mode, which is also great for this type of consumption as far as media is concerned. Now, you could always put it into the tablet mode. This is great for use with the pen. Now, as I mentioned, the pen is included at no additional cost. That is good to see. Now, it uses one quadruple A battery. It's not rechargeable, so that's a little bit of a negative, but having said that, that I expect to get good use out of it, out of that one quadruple A battery. It should last quite a bit of time before you have to replace it. Now, it also uses the Wacom AES technology. That'll be great for taking notes, sketching out artwork. It's working well so far. It also has an eraser on the top that is clickable and it is programmable. You can launch applications. You could do all sorts of things. I like having that functionality. I'll talk more about the pen in the full review. All right, let's talk about that display. What we're looking at here is a 13.5 inch QHD display with a resolution of 2256 by 1504. It's an IPS display with a three to two aspect ratio. It's also got an anti-reflective and anti-smudge coating. It's also a touch screen with Dolby Vision and it has a 450 nit rating in terms of brightness. And so far, I notice it has really deep blacks, very vibrant colors, excellent contrast, and it'll be great for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. I'll bring you all the numbers and metrics in my full review. Now, one of the benefits of having a three to two aspect ratio, it means you're going to do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. It'll be more conducive for productivity work, such as Microsoft Office, email, Excel spreadsheets, and the like. And I also find that the three to two aspect ratio makes it better as a tablet. Now, one of the downsides of a three to two aspect ratio, you'll get black bars when consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. You'll notice them on the top and the bottom. But it really comes down to a matter of personal preference. I actually like the 3 to 2 aspect ratio. Now, some may argue, why didn't they go with the 16 to 10 aspect ratio as they did with the others in the X1 line here in 2021, such as the X1 Carbon, the X1 Nano, and of course, the X1 Yoga. But I have to admit, I like this decision to go with the 3 to 2. It's more of a throwback to the old ThinkPads of yesteryear. So this is the front-facing camera on the ThinkPad X1 Titanium Yoga all new here for 2021. It's a new device, three to two aspect ratio. What we're looking at here is a 720p webcam, 30 frames per second. Is it good for Zoom? Is it good for your work from home needs? How does it look? And how does it sound? How are the microphones? I wanna know, let me know in the comment section below. Now it is an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. And it also has a physical shutter switch allowing you to turn off the webcam for more security and privacy. Now, there is a fingerprint reader located above the keyboard below the right hinge, and it worked well registering my finger each and every time I used it, and the setup was very easy as well, all working well on that front. Now, when it comes to the audio, there are two top firing speakers. They're Dolby Atmos speakers, and I got to say they're pretty decent. I wouldn't say they're excellent or very good. I would say they're adequate for definitely filling up a room. I think it could use a little bit more bass. It definitely has decent volume. I would say they're adequate at best. 
Now, my review unit has the 11th gen Intel Core i5 1130G7. It also has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM, and it has integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics along with 512 gigabytes of PCIe SSD storage. And so far, performance has been decent out of this low-powered Tiger Lake processor. As you can see from these initial benchmarks, very decent performance, especially for such a thin and light laptop. Very similar performance that we saw with the X1 Nano, also extremely thin and light. I have a lot more to test with the performance, and I will test the thermals, battery life, and everything I normally do coming up in my full review. Okay, what do I think about the X1 Titanium Yoga? 24 hours in, I am impressed. I like its 13.5 inch QHD display with its three to two aspect ratio. I like the Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4 ports, very versatile ports, although those are the only ports you get. If you wanna to connect to certain other devices, you may have to invest in a dongle. So that's just something you'll have to keep in mind, especially with such a thin and light device. Now it does have a haptic engine trackpad working pretty well in my initial use so far. It's got Optional wireless WAN 5G slash 4G LTE. That is great, especially if you're a business executive on the go. Now, it also has that ThinkPad keyboard. I was concerned going into this with such a thin device. How is the key travel going to be? It's working out fine. I'm very comfortable typing on it. Not an issue so far. The pen is included at no additional cost, which I like, although there is no place to store it in the device because of its thin nature. You'll have to stick it magnetically to the side. Now, the couple of things that I'm not crazy about so far, 720p webcam is so-so the distorted audio coming from those mics i'm not really happy with that maybe that can be fixed with a firmware update we'll see again no silo to store the pen again i would like to have some way of carrying that pen around without having to attach it magnetically i'm afraid i'll lose it so you'll have to stick it in the bag somewhere and of course the ram is not user upgradable but i'm not surprised by that since this is such a thin and light device but overall i am super impressed with this how thin how light it is and I love the three to two aspect ratio and that gorgeous QHD display. Very responsive, very vibrant, great colors. Now, of course, I still need to test performance out of that Core i5 1130G7. That's the low-powered Tiger Lake processor we saw, especially with the X1 Nano. We have the same one here, and I'm expecting decent performance out of it, and I will bring you those numbers coming very soon. So what do you think about the X1 Titanium Yoga Gen 1 here for 2021? I like it so far, 24 hours in, as I mentioned, really something special with that 13.5 inch 3 to 2 IPS display. I will put it through its paces and bring you all the numbers as of course I always do. Uh, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. At $1,600 plus, it's not a cheap investment, but of course, you're getting that titanium lid. You're getting that super thin device that really we haven't seen before. Something pretty unique. Again, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.